Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Lure Painting Live. I am Krista, the painter behind Colorado Custom Lures. I'm not sure if all if you guys can see me okay on Facebook or not. Um, I'm gonna pop in here and check it out myself. Hope you guys are doing well. We're gonna do a striped bass tonight. Uh, Miss Melissa was kind enough to send a reference photo. Thanks to everybody who did send me reference photo for inspiration tonight. Um, I was trying to figure out something I haven't painted live before um, to do tonight. And so I just figured who better to ask than you guys. So thanks for the ideas. Um, we're going to do, uh, so here's the two swim baits I have. Okay. And you tell me which one you guys think would be a better fit for a striped bass. Cause I'm kind of torn. I feel like the shape is better on this one here. But the fins are more realistic on this one here for a bass. So you tell me. I'm leaning here, but I'm not. I'm gonna. I want to see what you guys have to say. So I pro I uh, set them both up, um, and we'll see what you think while I'm trying to get myself. Um, while I'm trying to find the feed here on my page because my iPad hates me. So I just made a stencil for this tonight on my Cricut. Well, I don't have a Cricut. I have a Silhouette Cameo, but it's pretty much the same thing. So um, I actually had to cut it about three times because I didn't get the size right, which is okay because now I have a smaller one if I want to use like it for smaller swim baits or crank baits. And then I have a bigger one in case I have, in case I get one of these beasts and somebody wants me to do a striped bass or something on it. So this one I just finished up this week. This is for... Um, this is for, who am I shipping this back to? Like my, my mind is going blank. John, John B is getting this one. So I just finished that up. That's a GFB swim bait. He um, makes swim bait blanks from scratch. And then um, I don't believe he paints them. So he just sells the blanks and then you can ship, have them shipped to whoever you want to paint them and my bluegill has been a bit of a hit as of late so they've they've been a lot of people have been sending me those to paint so if you guys ever do get like a nice um swim bait you don't know who wants to paint it i can paint it for you but right now we're going to do some swim bait blanks just from good old china if you're not you know most of the mass manufactured swim baits are from china so it's funny when you see these knockoffs, they're made by the same companies that ma manufacture the stuff for the big brands. Um, they just alter them so they're not identical. So it's illegal to sell. Um, so there's not so much difference really. Let me turn my sound down here so you aren't hearing an echo. All right, thanks for the stars, Dave. Hi everybody, Richard, Anthony, Arthur, Rob. Rodney, Michael, Il, Dave, Bill, welcome. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'm just going to pin the website on the bottom here. Um, I'm in the process now of putting a bunch of new stuff in the store. And um, I'm not done yet. So if you guys want to order something because you don't want it to run out of stock, Go ahead and process your order with what you want now so you can get that. And then you can always add to your order later. And I'll refund any additional shipping charges and ship everything together. Um, so I'll pin the website here. But I did do, I, I put a bunch of jerk baits and walleye lures. Uh, I have a bunch of minnows that are going in as well that I haven't gotten to yet. So the, the jerk baits you saw, I have the same colors in a bunch of minnows, like most of the same colors in a bunch of minnows. I, I just haven't had time. I've got like, I had so much stuff to do today and I had to edit and take all the photos. So it was just like crazy amount of work. And I just haven't gotten to all the minnows yet. So um, this is a color that I didn't do in jerk bait, but I did in minnow. So those will be in. Um, and then I've got some like nice chrome minnows that are good for multi-species. So just, um, you know, check the website tomorrow morning or later. Yeah, probably tomorrow morning because late tonight 
is probably after the show is when I'm going to get the rest of them put in. Uh, I just couldn't get it done. I had, my kids had a basketball game today. And then my son had to get his hair cut. And then I had to take all the photos and edit all the photos. I don't really edit them much, but I do have to crop all of them. And re, re um, you know, situate them so they're faced in the right way or whatever. So it just takes a lot of time because I did a lot of different colors and a lot of different types of lures. So let me prop this up just a little bit so you can see me a little better. Um, and then I think you can still see my bait. And I'll prop this, this one down a little bit more. Oh, thank you, William. Yeah. William, Bill, whatever you go by, got the, the bluegill I did the other day on my show. And then another one in addition to that. That turned out pretty good. I have to get some more blanks to do more of those that you guys saw me do the other day. So here's the stencil I made. So I'm going to use this so that my stripes are all in order. And I just, all I did with this, guys, if you're curious, I just took a, um, like a stock photo off the internet and um, I took my Apple Pencil and I use an app called Autodesk Sketchbook. If you haven't heard me say this before, it's free. It's by Adobe. You can download it on Apple Store, probably on Google Play Store. Also, I don't know for sure. Um, and then I have an Apple Pencil I use on my iPad and I just take the picture and I create another layer and then I use my Apple Pencil to trace it. And then when I finish tracing the lines with my pencil, then I just um, make the photo completely, um, like basically you can fade it out to white. So then you can't see the photo anymore. You can just see what you traced. And then I, I email that to myself and I import it into the software that I use for my Silhouette Cameo, which a Cricut is the same thing as a Silhouette Cameo. It's for cutting vinyl, but I use it for cutting stencils. So I just import that into that software and then I can resize that traced image, however big or small I want it. And a lot of times I'll make multiple different sizes or you can reshape it even if you want to shrink it a little bit fatter or a little bit longer. Um, and then I'll make it fit different lure types that I want to do. Um, and so anyway, it's kind of like a, my I find it to be the easiest way to do it. You can use Photoshop, too, but I don't really know how to use Photoshop. And I find this to be like so much simpler um, for somebody who's not proficient or even remotely familiar with Photoshop. So, okay, let's uh, continue on here. Um, my Steinal Res. Hang on one second. I put this over here and forgot. This is my primer I use when I'm using water-based paints. I do not really use water-based water -based paints much anymore. I use lacquer. But... Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spray lacquer with no mask. So we're gonna do water base during the show. Plus, it helps everybody who's learning um, because you guys are almost all of you are using water based acrylic paints because they're just much less toxic. Um, so then you'll kind of, if you want to try and replicate something, you're gonna paint for yourself. Then you can just follow my recipe. So what did everybody think? Which swim bait did we decide on? Love you too, Mike. That's my brother. Uh, oh, it's okay, Anthony. I'll look at the photos and maybe do some of those the next time. We did have a good Christmas. I hope you did too. I'm good. Nobody. Oh, the white one, you think? White one. Number one. Okay, let's do the white one then. Oop, I don't think I've done anything on this swim bait in a while. This is a good little swim bait. Um, I believe this one has magnetic hook hangers. But don't quote me on that because I'm kind of drawing a blank. I think this one has, I'm almost 100% sure it has magnetic hook hangers. So there's magnets on the underneath the belly. So that front hook will stick to the bait. Um, so it doesn't get in the way. Or snag is easy on stuff. The Mega Bass eye slides do that as well. It's just a neat little feature kind of. So this is uh, Steinal Res by Badger Primer. This is what I use to help the paint adhesion. Water-based paint doesn't stick real well to plastic. So a little primer helps. 
And if you want to use something that's not real toxic, you can always use an etching primer if you if you're okay with really nasty stuff. But if you don't have a lot of ventilation, I still recommend you wear a mask all the time. The only reason I'm not wearing a mask is because I'm trying to do a show and talk to you. I always wear a respirator when I'm painting, and you should too if you're painting. And then a fan of some sort to ventilate the room as well. Um, a little paint booth even that just sucks up the paint particles into a filter is, you know, is good if you're just using water-based paint. Okay, so we're all done with that. So I'm going to clean this out. Uh, towel. My desk is a bit of a disaster. I've been, um, I was clear coating at the end of the week this week, and then I was trying to take pictures and post everything on my site. So I got a little out of control. And the mess is not, it's not great <laughs> right now. So. My apologies for the disaster. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, share the feed if you can. I didn't post this one. Thank you for the suggestion, Melissa. Hello in the mail, guys. I am glad to see international folks here, as always. Uh, what sale do I have coming up? I don't have any sale. I don't have enough inventory to run a, a sale of any sort right now. Your order's been stuck in Oklahoma. That is weird. It's probably just buried under a pile of packages somewhere and it'll eventually show up. That's usually what happens. I had more problems. The USPS was pretty good over the holidays, honestly. I think that FedEx was worse by far than anything. There would be, just be stuff in like tracking limbo with FedEx over the holiday. And um, USPS was pretty well, as just as fast as normal, which was nice. So I didn't have too many issues. Okay, so this is just opaque white. Um, I recommend Wicked White if you um, are okay with spending a little more. It's a little smoother, but it's not a big deal either way. If you're using some sort of a primer, um, it doesn't matter too much, probably. I just think that the regular Createx Opaque White is a little chalkier, and I've seen people have adhesion issues with it. Um, I guess if you're using a primer, it probably doesn't matter that much. So I'm just doing a nice coat of white. I'm going to do a little uh, heat set on this. Hello, guys. Hi, Ron. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Hey, hey to everybody over on YouTube. Hopefully, my YouTube is actually working. I had some bad, I had some bad connections. Uh, I don't know if it was last show or the one before, but unfortunately I can't really control it. I'm hoping that, um, they have like somebody putting fiber optic cables in out here. We kind of live out, out in the country, not like super far out in the country, but a little bit, but I don't think they're going to get to us for a little while, but I would be super excited about that. We have satellite internet and it's not Starlink. So sometimes it's really okay and sometimes it's not that great. Because it probably somewhat depends on how many people are on the internet at one time. I don't know. I don't really know the answers. It's just a bummer when it doesn't work great. And I'm sorry to all of you who can't, who get frustrated watching it when it doesn't work very well. All right, so we're just getting this nice and clean. 
And then I'm going to have to pop my head back to my reference photo that Miss Melissa sent me to see if I can figure out what to start with. I might sandwich this in between two. Uh, I might sandwich this in between two hoops of mesh. Uh, that's probably what I'm going to do, but I'm going to like make a quick decision. Yes, Chris is watching the kids. They're driving him crazy. Hey, guys. Um, they had their basketball game and lunch with grandma and grandpa today. And then tomorrow we're actually doing our family Christmas with his dad's family because they, his grandpa got COVID on Christmas day. He went to the ER and he had COVID. He's fine, but, uh, they were, um, his, his dad was with them. And so, you know, everybody was, they were exposed, so they didn't come over. So we're going to do it tomorrow instead. So I'm going to start with um, actually a little bit of a base color with um, some green before I put the netting on. So uh, first I'm going to do a little bit of, um, I'm thinking, I'm going to do, I don't want this to get too dark. Okay, we're gonna do moss green and I'm just gonna thin it and I'm gonna be careful how much I put down because I don't want this to get too dark. They're not super green, just a little bit, almost more, um, how do I wanna say what I'm trying to say here? Almost more like a gray green. And um, we we don't have striped bass here, we have a wiper and they're very gray. Our wiper, very, very, very gray. So I'm just going to put a little green and then I'm going to shade it down with some sepia just at the very top here. So that's probably enough. I'm, like I said, going to keep it to a minimum because there's going to be some variation from like one geographic region and one body of water to another, as well as like, depending on, you know, the conditions. Um, so the ones that you're, you know, the ones that you're like, obviously might look completely different than the ones someplace else. So I'm just doing a little bit of green. Um, and then the face has some around it too. So I'm just going to like circle the eye real quick. And then I'll do like more detail with like greens and blacks and stuff on the face later. But I'm just going to put this around the eye socket now. And then um, maybe do more later. So I'm going to clean this out. And then we're going to just sandwich this. I'm debating about putting some pink down first, actually. For some texture, I'm thinking, I think I am gonna put a little bit of pink down. So just because like, um, it might not show up much at all, but it, that's, it's like a tiny detail that you might, it might make it look more natural. Most of it's gonna get covered up and it's going to be not very pink, but this is a color shift pink. It's like a pink purple. So it mimics um, like the scales on a fish quite a bit because you get either that pink, purple or blue um, coloration when the scales shine in the light. So I'm just going to do a little bit of stencil texture in this pink and then a lot of it's going to get covered up with silver scale. So you might not even see it at the end, but we're just going to play around and see how it looks. So let me grab, let me grab this. This is just a, a texture stencil from, uh, this is from Anarchy Models. So it's a stencil for models, but they make stuff for fishing lures too. I think it was kind of an accidental market they probably ran into because we still all start finding new tools to use and 
once we start buying their stuff, they start making more stuff to accommodate our. You know. There's other places too. Uh, Whitmore Farms is another uh, guy that I don't know. I shouldn't say guy because I don't know if it's a family that does it. I know there's a guy involved. I guess I don't really know, but he makes really good stencils too. And I believe they're sold on, um, I think Sugar Tit Custom Lures sells his stencils as well. Sorry, this is all jacked up. Just twisting that around. But he has all kinds of really good texture stencils. It takes a laser, you have to have a laser. Well, the Cricut could probably do this stencil, but to get the really tiny detail stencils, you really kind of need a laser cutter. The Cricut can do it, but you have to get your settings just right, and it's kind of hard. I, I think it's hard anyway. It's frustrating, let's just say that. So sometimes it's easier just to pay somebody else. You know what I mean? It's like doing tile work or something, right? Like, you could do it yourself, but it's easier if you just pay somebody else. <laughs> I say that as I kind of need to do tile work. Okay, so I have um, two... I have two, um, these are already put together because I was using these on the lures I was just doing. So this is just shower loofah material. And it's got kind of like that um, triangle-ish shape. You know, it's kind of um, similar to a scale. And it's a little tricky to stretch it out straight. But once you get it in there, you just leave it in there and you don't have, and it kind of starts to hold its shape once it gets a bunch of paint on it. Um, it gets more, stays kind of in that shape. So you can take them out and put a different type of mesh in here and um, then put it back in. Once it gets paint on it, it kind of like holds its shape a little better. One second, I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing some uh, clamps that I didn't have out yet. They're right here, so hang tight. All right. These are just some uh, clamps that I bought for holding these together. My apologies if I haven't been following your comments. All right. If I missed your comment. Thank you so much, guys. Holidays were good. Thanks for asking. Kids are spoiled, the whole nine yards. But um, we did have some sickness going around. So we're doing um, Christmas extended family version tomorrow. So they'll get second round of presents, you know. So they're excited for that, obviously. Okay, um, I kind of wish I had one more clamp, but I don't know where I put them. So I'm just going to hold my hand on here. It'll be okay. So I kind of clamped down on the mesh on this side because I wanted it to kind of like push down a little bit more on the bait. Because um, that's a skinnier part of the bait. If that makes sense to anybody. And um, it's just shower loofah. This is just shower loofah material. So first things first, I'm going to do a silver. Oh, I forgot I was going to do um, that. Well, we'll do that last. I was going to do some sepia over that green, but I'll do it. I can do that later. So the bad thing about, I, I guess I heard they discontinued this paint. Somebody told me that. I don't know if it's true or not. But this is the Testers Aztec um, acrylic paints. And somebody told me that this is discontinued. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can... Tell me if that's true or not, but I heard that it's discontinued. I would say the closest thing you're going to get to it, I mean, there's nothing that's even remotely similar, really. But um, the the Auto Air Metallics by Createx are pretty good. Um, but something about this formulation is a little bit different that I can't even describe. And it's a bummer that they stopped making it. I don't know why, so... I'm trying to get the pink out of here and it's, it's being a butthead. Okay. So 
So this is silver. Tester's Aztec. Um, I don't think, I don't know if you can get this anymore. So good luck if you're looking for it. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's very opaque. So I'm just going to do pretty much the whole thing in this color. And, um, these are actually, um, right out of the bottle. You can spray them right out of the bottle and you don't need to thin them. And I might come back with a light dusting um, of a blackish, like a really thin black to give these scales a little depth. And also because um, this silver is not very like gray or dark. And I think you might need a little bit more definition. But we'll see. So one thing I could have done that I didn't have time to do um, was to make a like a super thin line, like a thinner line to go in between the fat lines to make this bat, uh, the striped bass. Um, so that's something that I might do next time I paint. One of these is uh, add that set. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but if you look at a picture of a striped bass, they almost have like a very faint line in between each line. And um, that's a detail you can definitely add that I haven't, I didn't have time to make the stencil for it, but it's something to consider. Okay, so let's do some stripes. So let's get some black out and let's thin it down. Is this black? Okay. This is detail black, wicked detail black. And then I'll thin it with some reducer, which is just Createx reducer. This is just water. I'm just rinsing out my um, brush with some water. And now I lost my stencil. Really, guys? Lost my stencil. Help. I swear it was right in front of me. Somebody tell me where it is. This is not acceptable. I lost my stencil. Seriously, I did. I can't find it. Here it is. I found it. Okay, thank God. I was just like in a panic. It was like kind of underneath my iPad. I don't know how I managed that one. Thank you so much, guys. Um, not tonight, but I will get to it someday. <laughs> yeah, if you want to order one of these once I'm done, uh, you don't know if it's going to look good yet, so don't get too excited. Then um, just PM me so that I... Uh, so I don't forget because I will forget. I will forget who said they wanted one. And if I don't have a record of it, it's like who, nobody knows if I'll actually remember. All right, I'm gonna just hold this against the lure here. This is a, this stencil is a little big, um, but it's okay. So I'll just miss one stripe, which is not a big deal. So I'm just lining up uh, this end of the stencil right behind the gill plate. And then I'm just going to spray lightly black um, just along the, along the stripes. And then you'll get that, um, you know, texture because of the mesh being there. You'll get the space between the lines. That's what we're hoping for anyway. We'll see if that works out okay or not. All right. Here goes another thing. So I'm going to do my best to hold this tight. I'm going to spill this. 
I could put a cap on it. That might help. I have one right here. So I don't spill black paint all over it. That would be disastrous. All right, so I'm just going line by line here and we'll see how it turns out. I know you can't see much, but all I'm doing is spraying a stencil, seriously. So like, even if you can't see up close, you're not missing much. I'm just spraying my airbrush through a stencil. Some people kind of get mad because they can't see what I'm doing. There's not much to see really right now. Okay, so there's the front side. So I'll show you what that looks like, but you're not going to be able to see the skips in the stripes because I haven't uh, taken the mesh off and I won't do that until the end. So, so you'll have to just be patient. Okay. That's how I talk to my dog. Okay. Okay, Sage. All right. She got to go fishing today. My doggy. She loves the boat. She's a retriever, if you couldn't guess that. Not that every dog doesn't love the boat, right? I couldn't take her to the park because we had to go to basketball. So she got to go fishing with Daddy. All right, this is a little tricky because um, I'm hitting the end of the um, the cross stitch loom here, and so it's kind of getting in the way. But honestly, it's probably better than the alternative. So I would I would probably not do it any other way, um, just because of the. Um, Holding this on is like impossible. You, you can also um, wrap these in mesh. You can wrap them in mesh. Um, but that again, that's a, that's a whole other time consuming task as well. So it just depends on what, how you want to do it. You can like literally pin it on all the way around the bait, like from top to bottom. It just takes, it takes some time to do it. Some patterns you really have to wrap them, um, but I don't think you really do them. I'm just getting in the joint here a little bit to make it continue through the joint. And this last bottom strike here. Okay. So there's, there's the first side. So I have the stripes down the first side. So I'm going to do the other side now. I know that's not very exciting. Um, okay. Yeah, Anthony, I didn't really understand what you said. So just message me if you have something you want me to do. Okay. All right, so here we go. I'm just doing the exact same thing on this side. A little bit of tip dry on my airbrush. What tip dry is, if you're not familiar with airbrushing and its problems, is the paint starts to dry on the needle and then it has a hard time like spraying evenly or at all. So you have to clean it off. But now is not the greatest time to do that. So I'm just going to kind of work through it. 
just doesn't want to stay down. And then as soon as I get done with these stripes, we'll do a little, this is really not working very good. Do a little scale shading. Okay. It's not great, but it's pretty good. It's hard to keep these straight all the way across. You almost need a little bridge um, in the middle of the stripes. I don't... So what, what it wants to do is these want to split apart and stuff. If you had uh, something connecting these in the middle, it would probably work better. So that's one of those things that you learn as you go <laughs> kind of thing. Um, okay, I'm going to pop back to my reference photo to make sure before I take off the, um, the mesh on this that I have all the detail that I want. So I think I might do... Just a little bit of black speckle detail in between the stripes. And I'm just going to do some really small stuff. Like, hang on a second. So these stencils have like some really tiny stuff like that. So I'm going to do just a little bit of that in between the stripes and just in some random spots just to give it a little bit of depth because I feel like it's going to be really plain if I just leave it this way. So... It doesn't have to have like a pattern. It can just be kind of of random. They tend to have like some inconsistencies in the um, the colors, and if it's too pretty, like or perfect, then it's not realistic. Not to say that like super clean and um, you know no texture is necessarily a bad thing it's just whether you want it to look more natural or you want it to look more clean if that makes sense i suppose it's possible to do both but but i don't know So I just put a little bit of texture in between the stripes here, and I'm just trying to make it look more natural. I don't know if it will or not, but we'll find out. Okay. So I just put a little bit of texture in there, if you can see kind of the spots that I did. And I'm going to do a little bit on this side too, just to add some, uh, some details. Just in random spots in between the stripes. And I'm not making really big details, just small. This always gets stuck in the mesh. These stencils, if you're curious, are art tool stencils by Wada. You can get them on Amazon. Art tool, A R T O O L, I believe. They are not plastic or mylar, they're, they're um, paper. Um, so unfortunately they're not cleanable. And so you just have to replace them when they get too dirty. But they've got some cool um, rough texture on them. Kind of grungy texture. Um, so I like them. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm just going to do a super light spray of, I'm going to go this way actually, um, black along the diagonal. I'm going to do it on the other side. Okay. 
I'm going to go a little heavier on the top here. So this will just give it a little bit um, of a scale pattern that you probably won't, you wouldn't like not be able to see um, otherwise because I used a silver that's fairly light, if that makes sense. Okay, so we'll take this off now. Okay, so there's what it looks like so far. There's what it looks like so far. It's okay. I think it could be better, but it's a start. So let's do some more, some more um, detail here. Okay, so I'm going to get some sepia out and I'm going to do some brown on the top to shade it. And we're going to do some face details too. I'm debating whether I want to clean that out or not. I'm going to start with a little bit of green actually along the face here. I think if you got, um, it might be better. I'm trying to think. I have another kind of mesh that I think would might, might look better than this for the stripes. Now that I pull it off, it might be better to do the scales on a different um, pass and a different mesh than the scales, if that makes any sense. And so I think next time I do it, I'll use a different... Like, um, well, I'm not going to show it to you right now, but I have some that's like just a different mixture. And next time I think I'll do that instead. All right. So these are just some stencils that I cut. And so, um, this has like a green, it has like a greenish brown along the gill plate and then the second gill plate area. Um, and that like it looks in the picture. This picture is on the thread that I posted this morning, or I mean this afternoon, not this morning. If you're curious what picture I'm using. So again, I'm just kind of, that just spidered. Kind of putting that color in there and then i'm going to do a little bit of green texture in between with the stencil there's a little bit of like a rough texture around the face area so not too much but just a little bit and then I'll do the same thing on the other side and follow it up with some sepia to make it look less green and more fast light. Unfortunately, the water base colors don't have great, um, they don't have great colors for fish, if that makes any sense. Um, they're all too bright. They don't have those like uh, really dirty looking colors. So you have to you have to kind of layer or mix your own. Um, layering is looks better than mixing like random colors. So usually, um, if you get a too bright color, you can layer over it with sepia or something like that, and it'll look more natural. So there's a little bit of texture there. And then I also am going to have to do some white because um, like a lot of fish, they have that white splotchy kind of texture around their face or whatever. I don't know these terms they use for those things, but I'm sure there is one. I just try to copy what I see. I don't necessarily know what their purpose is, but that's kind of what they look like. So you'll see a lot of my baits have that look on the face like this right here, kind of. 
you see those dots on the face right there? I don't know. YouTube, it's so hard to see. I like this one. The white dots on the face. Okay, so a little bit of sepia. I still have that black in there. You got to be careful how long you leave black paint in your airbrush because it'll clog your brush if you leave it too long. Like overnight. Don't ask me how I know that. This paint is very chunky and really stubborn and I keep forgetting to replace it or forgetful, maybe not stubborn. All right, so I'm gonna shade across the top with this brown color just to um, make my green look less bright. Basically. And then you can even go over that with black to make it look less brown. Does that make sense? But you do like a really thin down black so it doesn't appear to be um, you know, just straight black or whatever. Thin your black way down so it's more like a so it's more like a um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. All right. Um, yes, I do, Josh. I have painted several Huddlestons. If you want. I can send you some. Just PM me. I can send you some examples. Um, do I have them in Colorado? I didn't understand. Are you asking about, what are you asking about, Jeff? I didn't understand the question. You said you have them in Colorado, and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't know what you were referring to or if you were even talking to me. Sometimes I get to the comments, like, way after they're relevant, so I apologize for that, too. Again, I'm just shading the, um, the face and the back. And with the face, I'm just trying to create those two lines that go down the face. Unfortunately, like this doesn't have a very realistic gill plate. Um, it just doesn't look realistic, the shape of it. That's kind of why I like painting. I prefer to paint. Um, Base that don't have a lot of texture on them because sometimes the texture they put on there sucks. Like they'll put these gill plates on here, but they're square or they're like they come to a point, like which doesn't even exist in nature, right? No, none of them look like that. So it makes it hard to do a realistic interpretation, I guess, of it. Like you're going off of a template that doesn't match the fish. So sometimes if you get too much paint, you can just take a, you can blot it a little bit if it's still wet and go back over it carefully because that's the one hard thing about water-based paint. It likes to um, spider if you put too much down at once. So most of these fish are like fairly white or light. So I don't want to put too much color on the body of this. I'm just carefully shading this. If I go too fast, um, it'll start to run. So I have to take my time doing um, the space texture. So if it's tedious, I apologize. I'm 
Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of black now, and I'm going to go, or I'm sorry, no, that's not correct. White first, pearl white, and I'm going to do that face texture, and then I'm going to do um, some black. The fins on these, um, it depends what picture you look at. So the picture Melissa sent me, the fins are like kind of grayish. So we'll just do them like a grayish or black color and um, we'll hope that looks okay. Oh my God, yeah, the tripod. Yeah, that was not good. Thank you for the stars. Oh, striped bass. No, I already talked about that. That's why I was confused. Um, no, we have, uh, well, I don't know if they do in Colorado or not. I don't know, honestly. Um, we don't have them at the lake that we live by. We have wiper. I don't, I don't really, I'm sure there are maybe, but I don't know where. I've not ever seen one caught here, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Okay. Now I'm just going to do this around the face. This is a stencil again from Anarchy Models. This is called Modeled, M-O-T-T-L-E-D. Um, and it comes with two different stencils that are, uh, one is smaller dots and one has bigger dots. And they're perfect for stuff like this. little crawfish, you know, texture. They work really good. They were like a well-kept secret for a long time, but now everybody knows about them, so. Um, so you just create a little bit of that facial, you know, the dots around the face. I'll do the other side here. Next time I do one of these, I'm going to try doing the stripes with a different stencil. I'm going to see if it looks more realistic. I like the pink texture under there. It looks um, natural. So that was a good idea, I think. And then I'm going to shade around the back and face with black again to make it look more gray and less brown. So all I'm doing is the gill plate with that texture stencil. So you're not missing much. You can't see. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so now that there, you can see it better. And also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go along the belly with this pearl white while I'm here. And I'm just going to do a nice cleanup of the belly area. And I'm going to make it nice and pearly white. Again, this is Testers Aztec Pearl White. You can always use, um, so Createx White, like the regular Createx White is really, it's really transparent. Um, so if you want a white pearl that covers better and you can't get Testers Aztec, I would get um, the Auto Air by Createx Metallic White. That's the closest thing that I've ever found that like closest to these, which are more, these are more um, opaque and they have, they cover like fast, you know? You'll do 400 layers of regular white Createx pearl to get as much pearl as you'd get in like one coat of these. And it's meant to be that way as like an accent, you know, the pearl, you pearl, you kind of like mist it over top of um, whatever else you're doing to give it a pearly finish. Uh, but it's not opaque, so try the Auto Air. They have a, a fine, and I think they have a fine and a coarse metallic. 
Um, I don't know. I can't tell the difference much, but I'm sure somebody can that I might have better advice than me. Um, but those are better than the regular creatine. Okay, so I'm going to thin this back down a little bit more. You can also add some um, 4004, which is transparent base, to your black if you want it to be more transparent. I'm just going to really go slow, misting it on so that it doesn't get too dark. But if you're not, if you don't trust your trigger finger real, real well, try mixing it with some, some transparent base or some 4030, which is balancing clear, and that'll thin it out too, so it's more transparent, and it doesn't go like you don't end up just accidentally loading the black on and covering everything up. This is a helping hands, Bradley, if you're still even on. I don't know when you asked that question. I'm sorry. I don't always see the comments right away. You can get them at Harbor Freight or on Amazon. They're called helping hands. Uh, welders, you know, like people who do fine welding work will use them to hold wires in place while they. So sometimes like if you go to Harbor Freight, you'll find them like in that section by the welding and electronics stuff. Um, and they have them for like, well, I don't know how much they are now, but they used to have them at Harbor Freight for like four bucks a piece. I don't know how much they are now, but you can get them on Amazon for maybe like $6 or something. I don't, I haven't bought them in a while because I have like six pairs. I don't really use them unless I'm doing swim baits or something with a joint, uh, like a joint in the middle so that I can hold it steady. I usually just like hold things by the bill or um, yeah, usually I just hold it by the tape bill when I paint. I do way too many at a time to put all of them in helping hands. It would just be like where you take up way too much room. But if you're doing it as a hobby and you don't have to do a lot, then these are great because you can just put it in, in here and then your, your hands are free or whatever. Okay, um, let me skip back. I'm going to try and shade this face a little so it's not so brown. And then we got to do the fin. This does not want to come out very lightly. It's kind of all or none on me right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at my picture one more time here. Yeah, wires. That's kind of what I meant. Sometimes I don't use the right words because I don't do these things like soldering. Sounds fun. Maybe I should try it. But I probably won't. Um, okay. I'm just looking at my picture. A little bit, bit of pink on the chin would not be a terrible idea, but I'm not going to do that right now. What I am going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of texture around the face here. I'm just going around the eyeball with like a little bit of a, a rough texture. This is just a uneven edge, so it, it leaves a little bit of a, a, just a tiny little bit of a textured edge instead of a straight edge on these um, gill plate transitions. It just makes it look, I don't know, not so, not so like, looks more interesting or something like that. I guess I don't know what I'm trying to say. So instead of a straight line, you have a little bit of a textured look to it. Where did I get that line? It was over here, I think. I'll try and do this one kind of the same. I'm 
Okay. <clears throat> That looks better. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do a little texture up right here. And along the top, I'm just gonna do a little texture along the top here with the shading and my stencil. And I'm just using the edge of my stencil to give it a clean, but not so clean line. So it gives it a little bit of a rougher look on the top. More natural. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Okay, other side along the bottom, or I mean, along the um, top edge here. Just throw in a little bit of uh, more texture on here to make this um, look a little messier. Not so flat. Okay, so far so good. couple areas that I want a little extra something something. I don't know what, just something. That didn't turn out real good right there. Okay, now I'm going to trace around this fin a little bit to give it um, a little outline. <laughs> so I'll take just, this is my um, curved stencil. So here's what it looks like now, okay? That's what it looks like now. And so I'm gonna trace around the outside of this fin with, um, I, I don't know, I have a bunch of random like curves and stuff. And usually you can just trace around them with the curves that you have. If you have like, we'll see if this one works. If it doesn't, I'll grab a different one but it should. So this goes, this fits right on the, um, this fits right along the top of the fin here. So all I'm gonna do is trace right along the edge of the stencil and then I'll let the overspray hit. You just kind of let the overspray hit your um, bait and most of the paint will go in your stencil. So again, just line it up the best you can and try not to spray past the stencil or past the pin. You don't want it to be too dark because it'll look, it won't look natural. You just want to get like a little bit of a shadow there kind of. going around it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then you're going to want to get like the end of it. It's going to be, you'll want the end to be a little darker. So I'm just, just kind of shading the, shaded the front little area right there. Do you see how I shaded the front of the fin a little bit? So you can see where it connects to the body. And that's all you're doing is just, just to make it stick out a little bit instead of blending into the rest of the bait. Um, since there is a fin on here, usually what I do, um, if there's not a fin outline, is I'll just create my own. Like I'll have a fin shaped stencil. Like this is a stencil from Whitmore Farms. Like I'll use one of these and I'll just um, do it that way. And that looks really good. 
that's the way I prefer to do it. But some of these come with a sense or with a thin outline or a thin, you know, already in like the mold, so you can't, you don't get the fit back, unfortunately. I, I'd rather just put the fin on at the end, but um, they just, these KOs, they just come this way. The nice thing about them not having a fin already there is you can just kind of make the fin look like whatever you're trying to paint. And it doesn't have to all like match or whatever. So um, I think this is a 7i, and there's basically a goldish dark bass eye on this. So let's see what I've got that's the closest to the right. And these tails come clear, basically. Um, and then I use the same paint that I use for um, painting soft plastics, like huddle stints and plastic swim baits, um, to paint those tails because it's the only thing that stays. Like regular acrylic paint will not stick to, um, it won't stick. So here we go, this is a good. This doesn't have the outline on it. Um, well, you could go with that or you could go with the down looker gold, which might be better. I don't know if I have that in seven millimeter though. I have, I have silver. All right, well, let's try a couple different and see, see what looks best. This is the silver gold down looker. Oh, this is an eight, actually. Sorry. Right back. Oh, drop them all. My bag's broke. I think I've got the right color in here though. So there, this is actually a size eight millimeter eye and not a, a seven. So there's these gold circle ones, gold circle ones, or looking for gold down lookers and I think I have them in this size but I dropped all my okay. this one's a good one right here you use these these are froggy eyes so this is a good one right here but it's not really gold it's it's kind of like a, a dark color which might work and it's a very natural looking eyeball and I'll show you this in a moment so hang on okay and then there's the gold down looker and you could you guys can tell me which one you think looks better so this is your gold down looker okay and then this is your darker eye with a more natural look so natural look or the gold down looker. You guys tell me what you think. I personally think this one, but I don't know. You tell me what you think. So I'll look for your messages on the I votes, but you guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. I hope that um, you liked what I came up with. Um, in my, my evaluation, there's a couple things I would change, but I would change probably like the texture and how I did the stripes. But aside from that, I think it turned out pretty good. So I hope you guys like it. And once I get it all done, I will post pictures of it. Um, there's some new stuff in the store I just added today and I'm not done adding things. So um, if you decide that you wanna add something after you complete your order, if you order something tonight, um, and if I see two orders from the same person, I'll refund your shipping for the second order so you don't pay twice. Um, but you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for watching. And I really appreciate it. Um, we will see you next week, hopefully. Take care. Bye-bye.